Okay, so it's uh, 2 o'clock. We're going to get started with our uh, first uh, official presentation for Wednesday. Um, today is uh, Wednesday, July 6th, and this is the first presentation on the first day for the 11th Annual Energy Science and Technology Conference. And for our first uh, presentation, Dr. Rainer Viewegger uh, from Germany is a, a medical doctor who presented several years ago on global scaling. And that presentation is available on eMedia Press. And at that conference, he also shared a, uh, a book on the topic, which he'll be sharing with you towards the end of his presentation. And um, uh, he attended a, a medical university in Hungary and has been an orthopedic surgeon uh, at the famous Berlin Humboldt University. He also trained in acupuncture, chiropractic, and many other complementary methods. Um, as part of his long quest, uh, to find with uh, find new ways to deal with uh, chronic pain syndromes, uh, he learned about global scaling uh, way back in 2003, and he took a postgraduate course at Dr. Hartmut Mueller's Research Institute in 2006, uh, who I believe is a founder of global scaling. And um, besides his work in uh, uh, teaching practitioners and doing R&D, uh, he still runs a holistic medical practice where he applies the new principles of uh, new physics. Uh, he also devotes some of his time to uh, spread uh, knowledge about global uh, scaling uh, so that it can be used in more areas of life as a principle of communication and cooperation. Um, the current uh, uh, presentation today, I guess you could say it's kind of an extension or a part two of uh, his first presentation from a few years ago, which is the application of the global scaling theory in human heart rate physiology. Please help me welcome uh, Dr. Viewegger. So uh, when we look at the uh, at, at protons or electrons in their resting state, then it always means means that they are energetically not excited. And I would say any kind of stress is an energetic excitement. And that may be good or bad. It doesn't say what did it cause, but it also implies that all those oscillators want to be in their so-called eigenstate. So they want to be on lowest energy level because this is the time they can oscillate the longest after a single excitement. And then we are also able to identify it as what it really is. And if we excite an oscillatory system, it always tends, and, uh, tends to try to come back to its original state. So when we go back to health, and we suffer some symptoms of an excitement, then our inner doctor or the, the self-healing capability lives within the body we are made of because it just wants to get back to its original state because this is energetically the most efficient. And these are the areas which are uh, avoided by matter when it's oscillating on its lowest energy state. And when we go back to this figure here, then we will see that if we would divide this part only in two areas, we would not create gaps. So we would have two halves. So the first fractal structure with gaps on a one-dimensional line can be created when we divide things by three. By two, we get if we divide by two, we, re we get two equal halves without creating a gap yet. And uh, this is what nature seems to do with material real physical systems. And with global scaling, we can, we can answer some unusual questions which people normally don't set up. So why is the resting heartbeat at 67? 
heartbeats per minute and not at 80 or not at 50. There's a reason for it, as we will see later. So why has our day 24 hours instead of 26 or 28? It's the same thing. So uh, looking at the scale, it would give us the answer. Does the universe have a genetic code? <coughs> yes, it has. It's in the, in the numbers themselves. And uh, the numbers, they are beyond space and time. And everything that has space and has time is, is a local manifestation of what is implemented in that genetic code. Why are space and time both fractal? Again, because oscillations created. Where is the center of the universe? This is another very interesting question. And the center of the universe on the logarithmic scale is living inside us. It's the size of a cell. It's around 100 micrometers, or in that 10 to the power 1 or 2 arrangement. And this is the center of that logarithmic scale. And we are, <coughs> with our biology, we are those organisms which can communicate in the same symmetrical distance, but only on the logarithmic scale, with the biggest areas in the universe and the smallest on the other side. So Hartmut Müller always says, the universe as, as, as the biggest scale uses us as its information pool and we can use the subatomic world going the same distance on the logarithmic scale to the other side and use the subatomic world as an information pool and then we can share it. So the fundamental fractal is what I tried to explain you before that you have seen already the uh, green and red and red line this is what we use as the research subject in, in uh, global scaling when we analyze systems or when we have some measures that we want to look at what properties they may have and how they would uh, be in resonance with other systems or not, which, which is important if we want to tap into an oscillating systems and try to uh, get some energy out of it in an, in an easy way without destroying everything. So we can say that the global uh, scaling distribution and the fundamental fractal are created by the natural and harmonic oscillations of matter itself as the phenotype of the universe, but the rules are in the number continuum itself. And in the number continuum, the most important thing is divisibility. Because you need divisibility without remainder to create resonant phenomena. That standing wave system that we had created could be created simply by calculating numbers. And it only becomes physical when we calibrate this system with something. And the something we calibrate it with is the oscillation of the proton, which is so fundamental. And the second one is the oscillation of the electron, which is also fundamental because of their long, long lifetime. As we said before, Euler's number E is that number which helps avoid destructive resonance the most. And we see those islands of stability on the logarithmic scale, which is here, e to the power of zero, for example. And then three times further, e to the power six, nine, 
and this is the one that is created. Oh, sorry, this is created by the by the electron, and we could also see this as a sine cosine relationship because there's a 90 degree phase shift between the two scales. And here is why we see this on, on the scale. When we look at properties of the electron and compare it to the proton, then we can look at the mass ratio, which is 1,836.15 uh, something per one. And we look at the logarithm of it, then we will find out that it is very close to 7.5. And uh, this would mean that e to the power 7.5 is about 1,836. What you can also do using that global scaling is project the fundamental fractal two-dimensionally onto a plane. And all those rings that I have painted there are related to islands of uh, stability, which we can see here, for example. When we do the mass for it, we take the Compton wavelength of a proton, which is 2.1 times 10 to the power minus 16 meters, multiply it with e to the power 33, and we get 4.51 centimeters. You can do it with a pocket calculator, it's easy. And then you would know, oh, this is a range, a distance, that is preferred by nature for something, because it provides stability. Another example is uh, 5 hertz, which is at the, uh, on the scale at the value of e to the power minus 54. And that is our most important brain frequency. And we see this on the EEG that when our brain mainly works above 5 hertz, we are awake. And when we go below 5 hertz, we start to sleep. So there's, again, that shift and change of physical properties of, of the system when it uses different, different frequencies. But also, this is very interesting, and, and keep that number 54 in mind for a moment. We will see it again later. And you remember the 54, the minus 54 from the brain? The most important stabilizer in our solar system is two planets, Jupiter and Saturn. And we find their radius exactly in that node, which is at e to the power 54. And of course, then a heartbeat is controlled by the autonomous nervous system when we are under what we call stress or not. And then this is controlled by what we think. So when we have too many thoughts which are unhealthy, then the heart rate goes normally up. And then I did the uh, global scaling analysis. Here we find the uh, theta range with the 5 hertz, which we find in the REM phase of sleep, where we process lots of things emotionally in dreams. The alpha rate is also here between uh, important boundaries between 8 and 40 hertz. And then we see the muscle rate, which is at 23 in the eye, eye rate. Mm -hmm.